at the time, um, so first off, like 3D printers were like stuff of dreams when we were doing 3D stuff back in the day. If you did something yeah. long on the screen. So yeah, um, I, uh, I, I was creating my model. I was sending it off to the 3D print bureau. They were printing it. It was quite expensive. It would take a bit of time. They would send it back to me. And then I was able to look at the prototype, make some changes, make some structural changes and, you know, just, just get a chance to see it. And um, uh, eventually, because of the Kickstarter campaign, because, you know, everyone sort of, you know, we, we had a massive influx of cash there. And so I was able to buy myself two 3D printers. So uh, oh, what, nice. what I'm able to do now is I can, uh, you know, sculpt something and I can print it within a few hours, have it within my hand and have a look at it. So I've got two yeah. printers. One's an FDM printer, which prints some plastic. And then I've got a very high resolution um, resin printer, which can prints really high detail where I printed all my masters. So what I did is I printed my master and then I had to, so uh, every single time, yeah, there, always, there was always something new to learn. So I kind of learned how to do casting. So I learned how to make silicon molds and cast, you know, cre create a silicon mold from my 3D master and then pour resin into it and create the copies. I see. Because um, you couldn't 3D print all of them. It, it would just take too long and it would be too expensive. So yeah, so um, the way the the way the three D printer works is um, um, so, so the the first type, which isn't very detailed, um, it's basically a, a, a spool of plastic that goes into a, a hot end, which is a heating mechanism, and then it pushes it out through um, a very fine sort of um, um, kind of uh, like point, a pinpoint or something. Yeah, yeah. The, the the point little tiny little hole in the uh, I can't remember what it's called now. But yeah, so it heats up the plastic and it pushes it through and then it uses the X, Y coordinates of your 3D model to actually lay out the plastic. And so that's really great for prototyping. Yeah, it's like, it's like printing, like almost like putting yeah. icing on a cake or exactly, something. Exactly, yeah, just, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's, that's exactly, yeah, like a cake. And then, but the other, the, the resin 3D printer is completely different. It has a vat of liquid in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, like a, uh, in a little vat. And what happens is a platform comes down and right to the bottom, so you've got a really thin layer of, um, you know, resin in there. And then a laser cures it from underneath. And so it oh. cures it layer by layer by layer. And it peels it off and then does the next layer. And it's able to do, so the F FDM printer, the plastic one, that is able to do like 0.2. And, I, uh, you know, 0.2 millimeters each layer. So you get these sort of lines in it. And then with the resin printer, you can actually go like, uh, you know, micro, like, you know, a point point five of a millimeter like really really tight fine so you can get these like perfect sort of sculptures and you can do really intricate stuff as well so i've been able to do jewelry in there i've been able to reproduce some of the objects that we 3d modeled um i'm currently actually 3d modeling the bunga as well from the the, the royal armies the one that you yeah described so i'm doing that at the moment uh but um just recently um I've been yeah just for just for people that are listening or whatever we're talking about the the star that was like very tall and long and it has various structures and kundas and it comes up and has to a point and i mean it's really cool like i know that 3d model the image you you put up i i i was looking on your facebook page and i don't know what all the social media you're on but um the detail is just incredible i mean when you're looking at it and to think it's not real it's a computer image it's just it's it's just amazing yeah i mean we found when we went to the royal armories in leeds i mean they were even they were shocked uh, how much detail because we did a shield a lahore shield yeah. and they were like surprised at how real we got it and we got it working on mobiles we got it working on augmented reality we had it working we we got it working in vr so you can actually pick it up you can actually pick up mm. the Sikh shield you can pick up the Sikh short sword uh the, there's, a, there's a star sword there and you know and and when when i see when we take it when we take it to like the gurdwara or we take it to like events or the museum and i see little kids use it that's yeah. where I see like this is amazing because they're able to hold like a, a like an ancient Sikh sword in their hand. They're able to yep. pick up like a shield. They're able to pick up an old you know um, Nishan Saib. Uh, they're able yeah. to see a cannon right in front of them. And so I I really sort of when I was like working with immersive technology when I was working game technology I really saw what it could do for you know and 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 essentially the Sikh community where not great at telling our stories yeah you know we're not we're not great at telling our story we've got some right. amazing we've got amazing content but we're not yep. very good at sharing it and so 
Um, you know, and, and one of the things I've always been like concerned with is how can we uh, uh, prepare the next generation like in it? How can we prepare content? How can we educate them, you know, in, in formats that are more kind of palatable for them, uh, more accessible for them as well? Because they're digital natives now. They're growing up with iPads, mobiles and stuff. So we need to be creating. And, and this is my thing has always been we need to be creating computer games, animations. Uh, 3D animations, right. and we need to be going beyond just reproducing what's in history as well. Like you were talking about the science fiction stuff as well. We need to be putting ourselves into the future as well, like and into those right. stories, and you know, and and retelling those stories in different ways as well. So um, I, I think that it's really important now with with young people where they're consuming so much media that we are so behind in terms of the content that we can educate them with. And what's happening is they're losing touch with their heritage. They're losing touch with Siki. Because, because it doesn't feel real. It's like yeah. what you said, when you're interacting with these, uh, even these yeah. 3D objects, it does make you feel, it brings it the reality of it mm -hmm. to life. I mean, two thoughts that came to mind when you were saying that. Um, one was, um, <clears throat> take like the Incredible Hulk. Yeah. You know, for a lot of people, the Incredible Hulk character is more real to them. Yeah. And people will go online and argue about the physics of the Hulk or like, no, he's this strong or he's that strong or he's this heavy when he crashed into a building. This, I mean, it's so real to them or like a Star Wars. No, lightsabers don't work that way, you know, or, or a blaster uh, would be, you know, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, or this ship should be moving this way. This is all imagination. None of it is real, it's not but real. it feels so real to us that we can actually yeah. argue about the details, and, and, right? And so when you have when you're creating these objects and people are interacting with it, it brings that reality to them that oh, I get it, I understand how it moved, how it looked, how it felt, or how it would have been used. Like the reality of it comes together rather than just saying oh, he had a sword in his hand. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I think being able to see them, and I think we're we're growing up in an era where everything is visual like yeah. everything is 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 personified everything is you know you know seen and um you know we we need to sort of update ourselves and and make sure that that and, and i think especially with the gorgeousing statues and especially why i do the statues as well is i just feel that when you see it and i i, I just wanted young people to look at it and see it and just say i want to be like that when i grow up and because we've got right. real life superheroes in our in our history, in our, history. In our heritage, yeah. like you know, by Podja Singh, Baba Deep Singh, you know, Sanjanel Singh, all these, all these amazing like Sheed Singh, Singhnia, yeah. And I'm yeah. just like, you know, what I mean, we like I, I, I sometimes you know telling my kids and stuff about about their stories, and I'm like, these people did superhuman things, yeah. Like you know, it's it's great they love these Marvel Marvel films, but like you know, it's not real and it's all fantasy. Whereas yeah. our superheroes, they're all.